In this video we're going to take an image that we've rendered straight out of Daz, we're going to put it in Photoshop, do a little bit of post work and hopefully at the end of it come up with a better image than what we originally had. Hey there, welcome to my channel, my name is Rocco, I hope you're doing well. Post work. Um, I often get asked, you know, what type of post work that I do on my images and I usually reply by saying not much. Uh, obviously I do some like everybody does or everybody should be doing. Uh, but with this being a, a Daz channel, I've, I've tried to keep away from it over the last couple of years because obviously it's working in things like Photoshop or GIMP or other art packages and things. And to be honest, I'm not the world's greatest at post. I'm not the greatest uh, example to look at. There's probably people out there, dedicated Photoshoppers who could probably teach you a whole load more about post than what I could. But as I could do keep getting asked, I figured, well, I'll do a video on it of show, just to show one of the techniques that I do tend to use and, and one that I've been using of late. As you can see here over in the viewport, we've got this angelic figure with the wings all outstretched, looking fairly heavenly and whatever else that we might want to describe it as. Now, as you can probably see here, a lot of the grunt work has been done in Daz with the lighting and, and everything that's all set up as is. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to take this image and we're going to slip over to Photoshop. And we're going to continue with what we're doing in Photoshop. Now, I've already done a couple of little things on this image. I've narrowed the belt a little bit. It was sticking out a little bit here on the side of a dress. I've taken out a little highlight just down here that was on the dress. I don't know where it came from, but it was there. And there was a little bit of texture, strep, uh, te texture stretching on her thigh over here. And I've just you know, blended it into the rest of the skin so, to remove that away. All of them are simple things. You should you know, already be able to know how to do little things like that. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to apply this technique that I've been using of late to this image. It's just one technique that I use. There's other things that I use. But when I'm doing a more lighter image like what we've got here, I tend to use this one. It, it's fairly easy and it's fairly simple. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename this layer. This is the, the layer that came out of Daz, and we'll just call it Original, just like that, just so that we know what we're working with. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create four copies of this layer, and I'm going to do that by using Control-J, 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 and Control-J. Uh, and what I'm going to do is rename these layers to Tone, Contrast, Colour, spelt correctly because we invented the language. And tone, oops, tone, if I can get my keyboard right, contrast and colour. Uh, you could do all of this in, in something known as a smart object within Photoshop, but I'm not going to complicate things if you're just a beginner to, to Photoshop to begin with. So we'll just do them on different layers like this. And if we take off these top three for now and click on tone, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come up to Image. I'm going to click that. I'm going to come down to Auto Tone. And I'm just going to give it a click. So as you can see, it's changed colour. If you compare that to the original, it's just darkened it up and added a little bit more tone into things. I'm then going to do a similar thing with Contrast. If we turn that layer back on, come to Image, come to Auto Contrast to get a different version. I'm going to do the same with Colour. So Image, Auto Colour to get another version and then on tone contrast and color i'm going to apply all three to that one layer so i'm going to do tone contrast and then color maybe there wasn't much difference there from the contrast and color that was added but it did a little bit now if we were to take our original layer and just drag it up top just so that we can compare to what we've got as we go down the pile so compared to tone we've got that to compare to contrast We've got that to compare to color. We've got that and to the three. We've got that. And now that we have our five layers in place, what we're going to do, we're just going to blend them into each other to come up with a final composite image uh, come the end. Now, if I turn off these top three for a moment, because I'll just work on this one that we've labeled tone for now. Uh, if we come up to this little drop down menu these are all the blend modes that we can blend one layer into another layer and if we come down you can see they all do different impacts and have different effects on things that would that we're going to be doing 
Uh, because this is somewhat of an angelic figure, uh, I want to try and brighten the image up a little bit more than what it was in Daz. So I'm going to apply this screen uh, blend mode onto our image. Uh, and so as you can see, it's really brightened up that image and really made it white, really white. Uh, and then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lower the opacity down. And this gives me control of how much of that blend mode I want to, to filter through to our original layer. In this instance, I'm just going to go down to about 40%. You know, we'll just try that. It's not so bright now, but we've got to remember we do have other layers that we're going to blend into this. Uh, so now we'll come on to contrast. Again, we'll turn contrast in. It will overwrite that, that layer will overlay what we've done before and we won't see the below layers until we put another blend mode in so again we can just go through and find something that we might uh you know think that is okay i'm going to go with lighten this time uh no reason you can play around and choose whichever ones that you want uh for some reason it was already set at 30 percent, but you know we'll move it up to about a 40 again opacity so that you can see now we've got a, we're getting a nice light bright image coming into things now, when we come to the color layer, same thing, we'll apply the color. Uh, you could just leave it at normal if you wanted to and just reduce the, the opacity in, in itself. No reason why you can't do that. Uh, I will do it. Why not? We'll do that with the, the color rate. And we'll just leave it on the normal blend mode, but just lower the, the opacity down a little bit. And then finally, we'll come to the tone contrast color. Uh, and we'll just again add a little bit in there to brighten things up maybe maybe that's a bit too bright maybe another screen yeah we'll just go with another screen and we'll apply again the opacity down just so that we end up with an overall image that's the composite of all of these different five different layers that we've got now if for a moment we just take another copy of original just for now and just slide it up to the top there we can now compare what we started with compared to what we've got we've just brightened things up for this for this moment in time uh just brightened it up ever so much if we just flip there back and forwards between the two uh and i'll keep that on top there so we can check things later uh, so the next thing that we're going to do is we want to add some form of otherworldly glow or uh, another otherworldly little bit of magic to it uh, just to show that this celestial being exists, etc. So however you want to describe it. We're just going to add a little bit of colour into the scene just as an overlay, uh, just, to, just to change things around a little bit. And we're going to do that by applying something that's known as a gradient map. And we come down to the menus at the bottom, this particular menu here, we give it a click, and we get all of these different options that we can apply. These are all adjustment layers. And we're going to just select the gradient map right there. Now, as you can see, it's applied a very blue gradient map onto this which you know we're going to change that that's just the default and the first thing that we are going to change is the opacity like what we've done earlier with our other layers and we're just going to drag it down to about 20 percent sir okay just like that so what we've got we've got this gradient map here applied at about 20 percent of strength onto our image and that could be fine we could go with that it's got that little bit of bluey tint to it and that could be fine if that's what you want uh, but if we want to edit that we'd come up to the gradient map uh, mm. the gradient up top here and give it a double click now what we have here is we have a whole load of uh, presets in place if we wanted to apply one particular gradient map or another we just pick one and we just select it like that uh, but what i'm going to do we're going to have a look at this option down below because i want to show you how you can quickly get different gradient maps to to find one that you might quickly like uh, so what we're going to do we're going to change this type here to noise and the reason we're going to do that is because we want it to be slightly randomized. We don't just want to be fixed colors. Uh, and then if you look at the, the bar that's being created here, it's very, very rough. There's very harsh, you know, differences between things. So we're just going to lower the roughness also just to smooth out that gradient map a little bit. Maybe just down to about 15%, something like that. Uh, so now you've got a very smooth transition between this dark color over here, right the way through to this purpley color, just smoothly transitions between one and the other. And then all that we're gonna do, we're just gonna come down to this randomize button and we're just gonna keep clicking it. I'm gonna keep clicking it and just till we find something that we, that we like now. In this instance, I've already got one that's ready made. So uh, if I can't find anything here, just as I'm clicking, uh, what I'll do, I'll bring in the one that I've already got ready made and we'll just see how that looks like. 
So this is the gradient map that I created uh, at another time. Uh, and as you can say, we go from this lightly green colour pushing up towards yellow, uh, which I think that when it is applied to this image, it gives this little, what we're looking for, this little bit of an un, uh, otherworldly feel to it with this little greeny yellow tint across the image. Uh, and that's it. That's all that I, I tend to do with these type of things. Like I said, with these layers that I've done, you can just apply them in any way that you want. I mean, if we come down to colour, for instance, we could change something here. We could darken things up or apply different things just on the fly. And we can just change whatever we want to change whenever we want to change it. So I would play around with those uh, different blend modes. I would play around with the gradient map and just see what you can come up with. There's no fixed, set, direct, exact way that you have to do it. Just have a play around and see what you can come up with. So there it is, uh, a little bit of post work. I could mention I'm not the greatest in Photoshop. I'll put a link down below to a guy who I tend to watch you who really is good at Photoshop. Check him out. He's got loads of little uh, tips and tricks there on, you know, working on images in Photoshop. If you've got something out of this video, give us a like, because that will tell YouTube that I'm a better YouTuber than what I actually am. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell down below. And if you've got any questions, whether it's about this video, about other videos, about other techniques, just drop them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye now.